Hey everyone, it's back to back Daytona slaying bald headed dude, Yammy Noob. Today we're going to be talking about the sounds of motorcycles and the best sounding ones in our year of our Lord Rossi 2020. Can you believe it? I think I've said that a couple times now, but oh my god, it's a new decade. Oh yeah. Bikes don't all sound the same, so stop being a normie. They don't all sound like four cylinders or potato, potato, potato V twins. They all sound a little different. There are more than two types of bikes. Is this too much info? Hit subscribe and I'll show you how to get into motorcycling, my dudes. Let's kick things off with a bit of a meme. Number 10, it's the Turbo Hayabusa. One of the most interesting and probably confusing sounds anyone could ever hear on the highway would be the spooling of a turbo coming from a motorcycle. The turbocharged Hayabusa, I know not a factory motorcycle, catches the ears of many. What may be an actual benchmark for developers, the Turbo Busa offers a lot more than just the king of the road kind of power and prestige. When a group of jicks or squids rolls up on a Turbo Busa, respect is given instantaneously just because of the sheer insanity of it. ZX14Rs fail to slay the Falcon and by god the sound of these things is almost erotic. Since manufacturers of the turbo kits and engine builds vary, each turbo busa that you run into will most likely sound different in its own unique way. So let's get a sound clip really quick. And just a friendly reminder folks, as we work our way towards the 1 million subscriber goal, I will, I promise, get a Turbo Busa when we hit that number. No looking back, no regrets, Papa Yam will be on a Busa cracking mega dank nooners. Next up is the brand spanking new BMW S1000 RR. It might come as a surprise to many, but BMW looked to the 2005 Suzuki GSX R1000 when it began development of the S1000 RR. Suzuki boys rejoice, someone actually thought your bike was good. Maybe they reverse engineered the whole thing, who knows. What we do know is that the RR has a very unique sound to it. It's a very well tuned, very well refined note that sings to near perfection, it has this intake howl that sounds very BMW very pristine. If you've heard some factory bikes on a factory tune that made you cringe, you wouldn't be the first person. The S1000RR doesn't skip a beat, misfire a single time, and sounds smoother than Barry Manilow in a dimly lit room. Seriously, listen to it. No matter what exhaust is put on an S1000RR, it sounds pretty damn good. This bike will always stand out in the crowd of other squid missiles. Seriously, it's not your average Joe Kawasaki Jix or Yamaha. It's, it's a very well-defined acoustic sound. You know what else sounds pretty good? The sound of pubes being trimmed. Ah, oh, that's right. Get rid of your overgrown bush and give it a good trimming with Manscaped. You guys already know who they are. Featuring a ceramic blade with skin safe technology, the waterproof lawnmower 2.0 is everything you need to get started on trimming your balls. Now we just got demonetized, so please subscribe, please hit a like, and support the channel because every time I do Manscaped ads, we pretty much get demonetized. Have you seen the look on your girl's face when you undress? Is there a slight or maybe subtle hint that maybe you should tame your jungle or freshen it up, Manscaped has you covered so you can uncover. Damn, that's pretty slick. Check out their full line of products including the Crop Preserver, Cleanser, Reviver, and even the Crop Mop. For all of you baby yams and squids out there, use the code YAMMY20 to save 20% off of your order. Click the link down below, go to checkout, and go to YAMMY20 on the little box in the discount code. Get yourself 20% off. Nothing says sexy like getting naked in front of the missus and saying, Papa Yam, save me some money on Manscaped. Now check out this massive Dong. Number 8, it's the Norton Rotary. If it isn't weird enough that Felix Wankel created an engine with no pistons, no connecting rods, and no crankshaft, then it shouldn't be too weird that someone wanted to shove that thing into a motorcycle frame. Known for being the workhorse of Mazda vehicles such as the RX-7 and RX-8, it was a lighter engine that revved higher than most of its competitors. Behold, the Norton Motorcycle Company. Starting in 1987, they began using the Wankel Rotary engine in some of their models. What is the most unique about these bikes is their sound. Unlike the putt 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 of a typical engine configuration, the rotary makes more of a hum sound. Check it out. It's a very unique sound. If you ever get a chance at a bike meet show or even the track to see a Norton rotary up close and personal, 
please do yourself a favor and check it out. Number seven, it's Triumph's Three Cylinder. We all know my love for Triumph and also my hatred for them. Just kidding, we love you guys. But what about their bikes? A lot of normies think Triumph is just a name for another bike company. Some will say, oh, it's British and the conversation ends. The biggest point of Triumph Motorcycles lineup that sells people is the fact they have three cylinder engines in a lot of different bikes. They got it in their Daytonas, they got them in the Triumph Tigers, they got them in the Street Triples, they got them in all kinds of bikes. But specifically, the reason that they like them is not just the number of cylinders, it's the advantages that three cylinders has over four or two. With a three cylinder engine, the engine is a great compromise between the punchy torque of a two cylinder parallel twin while also coming close to the high revs offered on a four cylinder bike. Now some people will say that that makes the Triumph a master of none, jack of all trades type of bike, but I disagree being the proud owner of a 675R myself. The engine itself is flawed only during its combustion cycle when there is 60 degrees of rotation between cylinders firing, but actually the new Triumph Tiger has a new, uh, what is it, 213 or 123 firing configuration? It's different. I don't remember right now, but it's different. The sound of the Triumph is pretty sweet. Check it out. So what makes it awesome? So my Daytona 675R is about 128 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. Compared to the GSXR 750, which has 150 horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of torque. Consider the one-cylinder difference in design and a couple more cubes, yet the power output is only 22 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of torque. I do love my bike. Number six, it's the new Panigale V2. Uh, Ducati, I shouldn't even have to go into detail on why the Panigale V2 is just such a great bike, but here's the deal. The Panigale V2 has a 955cc displacement V2, not an L twin engine, Ducatistas eat it around the world. Makes about 155 horsepower and 77 foot pounds of stomping V twin torque. What makes it sound, well, like a Ducati? Each cylinder has four desmodromic valves being mechanically controlled by the camshaft. No matter what the bike, the Ducati is always going to sound pretty freaking sweet. The V2 is almost a return to its roots kind of bike because of all the hype surrounding the V4 lineup. Let's get a sound check. It's simply music to my ears and hopefully yours too. Next up is Harley Davidson's V-Twin. Now don't just jump to flaming me for this. The Harley Davidson engine is something of the most Americans know. It's the closest sound we have to freedom other than a bald eagle screeching. What we don't like in America is the a-hole who revs his Harley every chance he gets. Come on, dude, people like this guy are what ruin it for everyone else. The sound of a Harley is almost therapeutic to some. Seriously, guys, if you're into muscle cars with insane lobe separation angles like those Corvettes and Trans Ams that sound like they're gonna stall at idle, then the Harley Davidson is basically the motorcycle version. Big, loud, Loud, lumpy engines that produce torque. America. For 2020, the bikes mostly sound the same. Big, lumbery V-twins, lopey idle, yep. But thankfully, the guy editing this video, Lord and Savior Spite, is a Harley Davidson boy. So let's get a sound check on a sweet Harley from yours truly. What could be known as the most famous sounding V-twin is an accurate representation of the abundant lifestyle in the US. Don't hate the bike hate the riders. Number four, it's the Ninja H2R. If you ever thought about the sound of a turbocharger coming from a crotch rocket sounding unique, try the sound of a supercharger paired with a mean leader displacing engine. That's exactly what the Ninja H2R is. In almost a pissing contest between who can make the most obnoxious and fast motorcycle, Kawasaki put the foot down and said, no more. Besides the ZX-14R being built to take out the Hayabusa, that simply wasn't enough. Kawasaki had to go for the throat and slice it too. If you're the kind of person who might end up drag racing a fighter jet, well, this bike is for you. I'm pretty sure someone did that on YouTube. Capable of beating almost any land vehicle, the Ninja H2R is the track-only edition of the H2. Cost about 55 G, so it's kind of spicy. Don't mind the Kawasaki as they make a supercharged factory leader bike. Let's check out the sound. It is insanely loud. Go figure. The Ninja H2R is one of the meatest and loudest bikes from the factory, and that's for good reason. And I'm pretty sure it still stands as the highest horsepower factory motorcycle on sale today. Number three, it's the Aprilia RSV4 1100. 
One of the most exciting bikes to hear running is the Aprilia RSV4 1100 with its unique 65 degree V motor. The Aprilia has a mean exhaust sound that simply sounds badass. Many, many, many motorcycle journalists have slated this engine sounds to be the most glorious and greatest engine to ever be made in motorcycling. I tend to agree, it's pretty dang sweet. The engine design includes reduced weight from connecting rods over previous generations. This allows for faster revs and a sharper tone in the exhaust. With a displacement of 1078cc and its dual overhead cam design, the RSV4 1100 is a leader-ish bike with a very distinct sound. It's not the run-of-the-mill inline four cylinders that you'd expect from the big four, but something well worth to be called different. The RSV4 1100 is one of the few V4 powered motorcycles available today. Let's get a sound check. Number two, it's the one and only Yamaha R1. Separating itself from other members of the big four is Yamaha with its YZF R1 engine featuring the cross plane crankshaft. Have you ever heard one of these runnings? We'll give you a sound check at the end. It's enough to turn anyone's head because the cross plane design is so specific, it's not something you hear every day, unless you're lucky and you own an R1, of course. The origin of the sounds comes from the design of the R1's engine, which sounds like a typical 998 inline four cylinder with dual overhead cams because something completely different when the crossplane crankshaft is thrown into the mix. Since 2009, Yamaha has used the crankshaft design that is immensely more efficient than traditional flat plane crankshafts. The crossplane design aligns the piston in a 0, 360, 90, 180, and 270 degree positions, whereas the traditional crankshaft aligns pistons in the 0, 360, or 180 degree position. That's a lot of numbers. It leaves a dead spot during rotation at 90 and 270 degree positions. The result, the crossplane has more inertial torque and more linear power delivery, baby. And to be honest, it just sounds sweet as hell. Let's get a sound check of the crossplane crank R1. That is music to my ears. I am Yammy Noob, by the way. Did you think I'd hate the sound? My alarm clock is actually a one-to-one -one scale working replica of the R1 engine revving to 13,000 RPM just to wake me up. Last on our list, and certainly not least, it's the Panigale V4R, baby. Next and actually number one on this list of the best sounding motorcycles is none other than the Ducati Panigale V4R. What makes this bike number one? What doesn't make it number one? The design of the engine. Ducati has been known for building engines that are desmetromic, meaning they don't have valve springs or retainers. The valves in the V4R 998cc engine are controlled mechanically by the camshaft, which means that the engine can rev really, really high. The V4R's engine redline is 16,000 RPM, but it's upped to 16,500 in sixth gear. That's crazy. The V4R's engine is also a 90 degree V4, so coupled with the desmodromic mechanics makes it for one very unique engine that produces a very, very unique sound. Some parents after having a child instantly awaken or react to the sound of a crying baby. Ducati owners and anyone that's heard a V4R engine have the same reaction. It is that memorable. Let's get a sound check. Now guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Is there another engine you can think of that sounds just as good as the V4R? How about your neighbor's moped? That sounds pretty good. What bikes do you want us to find sound clips for? Are there any sounds you didn't see featured and you don't know why? Drop us a comment and we will get it all sorted out for you. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Fact. Over 25 million meteors or shooting stars enter the Earth's atmosphere every day. That's about 289 chances to make a wish per second. So start wishing to win one of our bikes for free. Goodbye.